I've mentioned a few times, and I'm going to mention it again, one of my favorite accessories in my stationary toolkit is my lovely Traveler's Notebook. This is what I carry on me all the time. In my backpack or around me, it's in my peripheral reach, and I'm always looking at it. I've done a video on my favorite inserts for the Traveler's Notebook system, especially in the regular size here. And one of the most crucial inserts for me is the weekly memo. And this is my whole basis for planning my planner system and planning my light. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the weekly memo and my planner setup with respect to my thought process and how I plan my week ahead. For those of you who are about to ask, well, Frank, have you tried bullet journaling and this planner system, that planner system? Chances are I have more or less, and chances are that I haven't. I suppose there's always a plethora of different options with respect to how you plan. For bullet journaling specifically, yes, I have tried it and I used to do it for a number of years and it's not for me. And I won't get into the details why, because generally that can be a <laughs> controversial topic. But no, it didn't work for me. And I navigated to the Traveler's Notebook generally as a keep all for journaling and, and a couple of things, but more importantly, just having that flexibility and simplicity. And it works for me. It might change. I, who knows? Maybe down the road, I'll go back to bullet journaling or try some other planning system. But right now, this is what works for me. Let's dive over to the desk and take a closer look. The weekly memo is one of the offerings from the Traveler's company in terms of the planner inserts or refills in their Traveler's notebook. Travel, this is the weekly memo that I set up for the first half of 2023 and we're coming up into the month of June. In fact, we are in the month of June. And I did a planner setup at the beginning of the year talking about how I added some decor to the weekly memo and some of the understandings behind what the weekly memo insert is in a separate video as well, which I think is in my favorite, favorite inserts for the Traveler's Notebook. The process for filling out my weekly memo is effectively a two-step process. Well, I guess it's really one step and it's a bit of an iterator step thereafter. I fill out in detail the plan ahead for the week ahead on Sundays. Today is not a Sunday, but I'm going to just go ahead and pretend like it's a Sunday. In terms of setting this up, the weekly memo is exactly as it sounds. This is the weekly sign and there is a memo page and it's left open to interpretation and to make it see or make it fit for purpose in terms of how you want to use it. This one is a pre-populated 2023 planner. You can actually pick up blank refills or inserts, blank versions of this insert where it doesn't have this pre-populated and you'd have to fill that out. And just as a, another quick refresh, the pre-populated planners are released typically every November through October, sorry, October through November, depending on your geographical location in the world. What I like to do on a Sunday is to start on my memo side. First off, taking the memo and dividing into three different sections, and I just use a little bit of washi tape. This gives me three sections within the memo side to work with. I typically put the first section somewhere between the Monday and the Tuesday line here. And then the third section is effectively the same area as the Sunday block. And depending on what I have in the back of my mind and if the previous look ahead, week look ahead or the previous week look back, I might give myself a little bit more space or a little bit less space depending on how I want to do it. The second thing that I do is add a division line inside my middle section here. And I'll talk about what all these different sections are for. So I take about five spaces typically. The first section here is for a quote. I will typically pick a theme or a guiding philosophy or, or policy for the week ahead to set the tone for the week in terms of what I want to achieve or how I want to go about it. Lately, as I just recently posted about my break from this channel. That break also with the lovely spring cold or spring flu that came along with it, introduced a complete break in my routine and pattern. I love getting up early typically, but with the late nights and just general lethargy, I haven't quite been able to bounce back into my regular routine. So right now, a lot of my focus is on habits, routines, and building some of that structure back into place for me. As you can tell, I'm very clearly a habit-oriented person. So one of my favorite quotes right now is from a book I recently read by Gretchen Rubin. 
on habits. Reading the quote, obviously flipping to the, this page on a daily basis really helps to set the tone and remind myself and keep coming back to what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. I don't generally discern the color selection of the pens that I'm using. And I tend to modify, if I'm using the same quote on a week to week basis, I tend to tweak it smallest way possible. Generally, I'm a pretty good judge of character in terms of the remaining space, but as you can tell, I somewhat squished it in there. The second section in here is for a list of activities and to do's for the week ahead. The so section number one, section number two, let's call it section two A, list of activities for the week ahead. Section two B is for social wants and obligations, perhaps, being the introvert that I am. And then the third section down below is to capture activities that I'm not going to necessarily get done in this week and that come up as a result of just new things being added and would will be for the following week. But I'm going to flip over to the left hand side before I jump over to the list of activities and to do because there are a couple of consistent and daily activities or routines and structures and habits that I want to build for myself and they're quite repetitive so I won't list them out through writing either on section 2a or on a daily basis in fact i will capture them through iconography so I, I draw myself little icons that way it acts both as a tracking mechanism on whether i'm actually accomplishing that and a quick semblance of a to-do list so i've got a few different icons right now that i've got going on before i take a step into that you'll notice that in the weekly section there's a tiny little line here that divides the weekly section from left to right. I like the flexibility and open for interpretation that's being offered here. Generally, how I divide the left and the right is obligations or things that must be done that aren't necessarily for myself. On the right hand side are things specific to my personal growth or my own wants and desires and needs, perhaps even my well being. I'm currently in a course which requires studying, and I actually really enjoy studying and learning but I have to keep reminding myself to the busy lifestyle, pick up my textbooks, look at the course material from time to time and refresh myself. I draw a little textbook icon and I actually have it on a daily basis. Remind myself to even take two minutes, three minutes, one minute, half an hour, whatever time I get to looking through the course material. And that way I can generally keep on top of it. And of course, as I'm saying that, this week has been challenging in a number of different ways. This past week, I should say, because I'm pretending it's a Sunday, so I haven't gotten as much done. Even though I'm describing how much I love studying and, and enjoy it, it's also something that, I guess, in my subjective discernment of left and right, something that must be done, not necessarily related to me, but somewhat is. It's kind of a funny way of putting it. In terms of the right-hand side and routine structures, well-being, things like that, there's certain things that I do for myself or have to do for myself or rather want to do for myself that I want to keep a track of. First icon generally is getting up at four. So I'll just draw a little clock here. As mentioned with the recent sickness, I ended up sleeping later than I had intended to and waking up a lot later. It's a bit of a return to having to wake up to 4 a.m., which normally has been quite easy for me in the past, but lately I've really struggled, and that says a lot about my bedtime routine perhaps as well. So I'll just draw a little 4 a.m. clock, reminding myself and tracking whether I actually got up at 4. The next thing that I tend to do after I wake up is meditate, and this is part of the habit stacking, i.e. taking two habits. They're not necessarily related, but making them related. So immediately after I wake up, at four, I generally tend to meditate. Again, because I'm not waking up at four, my meditations are a little bit shorter than I'd like. So I'll just draw a little meditation icon, which helps me track the fact that I am stacking these two habits together. And more importantly, I'm attempting to hit my expectation for, of myself of how long to meditate every morning, which generally is somewhere between 40 minutes to an hour. The third icon that I will introduce for myself is making sure I move my body. And so that's either working out. And lately I've been getting into calisthenics, which has been a lot of fun. 
I traditionally have been doing a lot of weightlifting, but something in me this year just decided to try out calisthenics. So I draw a little weightlifting symbol here. Generally, my routine is Monday, Tuesday, take a rest day on Wednesday, and then pick it back up on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So instead of have, having to write them out, I will list these icons, and that is, like I said, both a tracking mechanism and a visual representation of the same to-do activity or item on a daily basis or a recurring basis. Okay, so now getting into the meat of the activities. Now I'm going to just pick a few different examples here as I'm doing this earlier in the week and it's not a Sunday, but there are certain things that I must get done for the week ahead and certain things that are more and nicer to get done. And so I'll just list a few things here. So this icon is specific to the course that I'm taking, but there's a couple of other learning or rehashing, reminding things that I'm also doing on the side here. One of them is a course on social engagement with respect to public speaking and a couple of things like that. So it's a bit of a refresher. And then the other one is a refresher on solar systems and going through some of the basics again. And, and I used to do quite a bit of solar. It just hasn't been a priority in my life, but I'd love for a refresher on that. Social solar courses. There's a lovely parenting book called Good Inside right now that I'm reading. My kids being a priority in terms of parenting strategies and always trying to build emotional resiliency and resiliency in general and, and looking at um, different strategies, just adding that to a toolkit or looking at a couple of different changes to our diet. And we typically have a go-to meal plan for the week ahead and now we're just changing things up a little bit. So I don't necessarily or I don't usually list out meal plan, but we've got a few new recipes that my wife and I are looking at and some different sources of food that we want to try out. So we're just having a think through that. So I'm going to just put down meal plan and recipes. Stationary at four, video editing. Again, I don't usually list this one out because it was happening almost on a weekly basis and it felt like I didn't really need to list it out because there was a set routine, but I'm trying to get back into that right now. Coming back into the swing of things, I'm just deciding on which days are appropriate to record and which days are good to edit. So I haven't listed it quite out as an icon just yet. And we've got a white fly problem on a couple of our plants. I'm looking at some solutions for that. That's top of my mind and landscape cleanup. And it's okay to make mistakes. So I've listed a few different things there before I get myself into too much trouble on camera, I'll leave it at that for my to-dos and I'll give myself a little bit of space. So I typically list the must to-dos in red ink, beautiful writer's blood. And then I'll go into give myself a little bit of space. Some of the things that are nice to get done, but not necessarily top of the priority list. So I've been biking to work, which has been taking a toll on my out of shape body and I'm having to learn how to stretch. So I've got to focus on building a stretching routine and what that even looks like and means. I've fallen behind on my five-year journal. And you'll notice that I'm doing a, a flip back just to see what else I might not have done the previous week before. And these items can carry from a week-to-week -week basis for me, and they do eventually get done. If I run out of the must-do, I'll pick out a few of these, and if not all of them, and add them to my daily list. And I give myself a little bit of space on either side generally. It's pretty rare for me to completely fill this up and fill that up. If I do that, it's obviously a busy week and I'm going to prioritize as I need to. Moving to section 2B here, the right hand side here is for social events or obligations. I'm generally an introverted guy. I, I do very much enjoy my me time, so to speak, uh, but obviously I want to hang out with people and it's a fine balancing act. And the reason I list it out is so that I can get a discernment or an understanding of how much I'm stretching one way or the other. But there's a few key people I need to touch base with or want to touch base with. So I'm just going to list them out here. Now I might not get to every single one, but it's just a reminder to when I have a few moments to hit, hit them up with the text or a hi or something generally like that. Okay, now that I've got the right hand side filled out, I'm going to move on to the left hand side. This is done just as a reminder on a Sunday night and I'm taking my sweet time with this, but I typically can rip through this in literally five minutes. I'm going to now take the red and the blue here and spread that out over the course of the week with days that I know for a fact for the week ahead that I'm going to get done for that specific day. And then whatever's left over as the week goes on, I will start pulling it over and seeing if I can complete the red for sure and adding a few blue items here. So in terms of Monday, the 5th, 
definitely going to, I'm going to put the social solar course here. Got to do a little bit of a refresher, the meal plan. So the social solar course is a me item. And I'll put that on the right hand side. And the meal plan and recipes uh, is a bit more of a obligation. So I'll put it on the left hand side. Hey, I'm going to decide to record a stationary at four video on a Wednesday. I'll take a look at the white fly problem next Saturday. Now I won't list out every single red. Sometimes I'll leave it. My depth stretching routine sorted out here. And sometimes these are not necessarily activities that are you done on that day, but prompts. And I'll put a little explanation mark here. So the five-year journal updates. Ideally, I should be updating on a daily basis, but certainly by Thursday, I want to make sure that I can strike that off and say it's done. So I've tackled this side, this side. I might quickly slip in a couple more here. That seems like a good framework for the week ahead. I'll just go through an exercise here. Perhaps I'll take an example of a previous day here. So what I'll do is I'll strike off, this is Monday the 29th, so for this week, record stationary at 4. I didn't actually get a chance to do that. As I said, I'm still trying to figure out my schedule around recording a new video. I had anticipated recording a brand new one Monday morning, but it didn't quite work out for a number. I'll sometimes move things down with a little arrow. I don't necessarily move it right to the next day. I might move it down to a later day. But leaving that prompt just means that that task wasn't completed on the day I had hoped for, and I'm going to figure it out later on. So today is a Friday. I'm, re I'm recording this stationary at four video right now, so I can strike that off beautifully. I don't have any other things listed here, surprisingly, so I need to put a little bit of time in thinking my day out. I certainly woke up at four and I've meditated. I haven't gone into the working out yet, and that's my day. And then as you saw, I'll strike, put a strike through my icons, for those things that are completed, and that's a nice tracking mechanism. Certainly on these previous days, I did not actually hit my 4 a.m. wake-ups, but I did actually meditate yesterday. I forgot to strike that off, and did work out. So there's things like that that I tend to do. If I've got activities that I want to capture in the following week, like this one here, I'll just write that down in this section, and then ideally, I move that over here. Now, that specific activity, I've just got to think about a little bit more, so I'm going to move it into the blue, and it's not necessarily for this week. I'm going to put a question mark there just to remind me to, to think through that. Ooh, I did miss one icon here that's pretty important to me, and that's reading. And I was talking about that recently. So I generally have a little bit of time where I just like to read books. And I've got a few, my favorite genre is nonfiction. There's a couple of things that I'm reading right now, which I'm really enjoying. So I'll just put down reading on a daily basis. Again, it's not necessarily to read for an hour or anything like that, just picking up the book and flipping through a few pages. You'll notice that my right hand side is obviously a little bit more populated than my left hand side. Generally, that's just the way I've tried to set up my life, that I'm doing things for myself. And that's not meant to sound selfish, but things that are good for me perhaps is a better way of putting it more skillful. And then the obligation side, bill payments and things like that that come up throughout the week, I'll certainly populate that on the left hand side. That is a walkthrough of my process in terms of a weekly spread and the weekly memo. I really enjoy it. I, I love crossing things out. I just love the simplicity and the open for interpretation of the weekly memo planner insert. And I tend to tweak this. So right now I'm very much focused on the iconography and this breakdown of the structure of these sections here, which seems to have been working for me for the last six months, but who knows? At the end of the year, I might decide to change things around and do it differently. This video took probably around 15 to 25 minutes of talking about it and listing down my process. And as I mentioned, I can literally sit down on a Sunday night and rip through this in a five minute exercise. That's something I really like about it. The other thing I should, I should mention that I tend to use is my plea passport. And I'll have some activities for the month of June here that I will populate into a week by week basis. So that's another companion item in terms of my planning toolkit. And of course, I've got this lovely gigantic calendar from Midori that hangs on my wall. So those are the two companion pieces in terms of my planning toolkit. My weekly memo is what I live and breathe. And I obviously keep my traveler's notebook on me everywhere I go. And so this is the one that gets the most attention and the most details. I generally try not to overburden my days. I list out a few things and keep a lot of flexible time. Also, just because I have work in there, which I don't list out, but obviously takes up a good chunk of my day as well. And then uh, and generally things that I have fun with, like hang out with my kids and bedtimes is also a chunk of time that I don't necessarily list out, but it's in there in the back of my mind. These are kind of key activities that must get done or I want to get done. And that is how I get through my week. I love how my planning system has come together. It's 
It's something that I really obviously lean on quite a bit. There's enough structure and routine and rigidity in there, but not so much that it feels like a chore. And I actually have a lot of fun doing it and love crossing things off. I guess I'm one of those individuals who loves to cross things off. I am curious to see what my journey is with the weekly memo. Perhaps I'll keep tweaking and keep modifying, which I almost guarantee I will. And I feel like I have found a routine or a rhythm with how I do my weekly memo right now that really, really works for me. If you've got your own planning systems out there and if you use the weekly memo uh, insert specifically in a different way, I'd love to hear about it. Please feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. Thank you so much for watching me. Thank you for sticking with me. It's been a fun journey so far and I really enjoy the community in the comments that are building up here in the in the comment section below. If you like this video, please consider clicking on the like and subscribe buttons below. Take care, have a wonderful week ahead and happy planning. Bye for now.